Hi everybody, hope you're well. This video is going to be an updated version of the previous video I did on skilling before. So I'm going to start off with just explaining the basics. I know I've done a lot more videos on scalers now and most of you will have a much better idea, but I'm just going to cover some of the basic concepts and if you want to look at more in depth, I have a heap of uh, videos about scalers in a playlist on my channel about doing winning skillers. So if you want to have more information, go look there. So I ordered a skiller off a of top group and thank you to them for that. Um, it's fab. So I have to start with whenever you you can breed your own skiller and if you want to breed your own skiller then you need to have either hair pack or Aphrodite's tears and the reason for this is because you want the inborn skills of the horse to be very good as good as possible and obviously you need to make sure that the parents that you breed it from are both 100 blob. They must be, okay, if you want to get the best possible chance. Obviously, there's a randomization factor, which I've talked about as well. But you need to start off with having Aphrodite Tears or Hera Pack. So then, if you don't want to breed it yourself, you could order it from a team. So check some of the top teams that are on the game. It's very easy to do that now. You just go to the best teams and you can have a look through there and see what the best teams are and go and order one. And maybe you want to order it for a specific discipline, maybe the best thing to do would go and see what horses are winning the Grand Prix, what discipline they're winning, and things like that. And to do that, you would just go into breeding, competitions, and then Grand Prix, and then you could get a rough idea of what horses are winning in those areas. So that's the easy way to do it in that respect. So whenever you order from a team, they will send you a gelded skiller. And I'm just going to mention this again. The reason you get a Galdo Skiller is for two reasons. First off, the bonus. Mares and Stallions don't have this bonus. And effectively, if you have two horses exactly the same skills and bonuses, except for the Elden bonus, the Gelding's probably going to win. Because it has this extra bonus that only it counts and Mares and Stallions can't. The second reason is, is because top teams don't want to be selling out horses that are the very top. Because whenever you opt by Skiller's, or top of the genetic potential, a team's not going to give out their best breeding genetic potential to you because they've worked very hard to get there and they're hardly just going to hand it over to you. So don't ask because you'll probably get quite a negative response. So those are the first things. Then obviously the games. The games are the next really important part of skilling. So I'm just going to go here. If you have, I think if you have Pegasus account, you can see this, but I have VIP and so I can view the details, but it is on Pegasus. Pegasus account as well. So 60 full games is the most you can get. And as I mentioned before, the innate skills are the inborn skills. These are the full the skills that the full was actually born with. And then this is the games. So the games, there are guides on several players' pages, some of the mods, and that would have full games. I think I have a one about full I think I have a video about full games actually. Yeah, I do. Uh, as well. So getting the full games, you need to make sure you get all 60 points. And as you can see, this one has been gamed for me already. So we'll not be covering that in this. So the next thing will be the rides, the training com or training sessions, the competitions, rides on the beach and the lessons. So we'll get started. So obviously, um, <clears throat> to start off with, this horse is old enough to put a next pack on. So we'll put a next pack on it. And the reason I'm using the next pack rather than these items separately is these items separately would cost more. So three passes, two passes, three passes. Um, whereas if I just use a next pack, I get it all for six passes. And if you're VIP, you'll get the Achilles heel as well. So I'll click on that. So we've got our next pack on the horse and this will allow us to age it and train it twice as fast. And also it will make it immortal. And the Achilles heel obviously has the added benefit of being able to put the horse to bed with less than 20% energy. So we'll just go back. So we can do more with it. That's why it's handy. So we'll start off by doing some forest rides. Or actually no, we'll start off with mountain because mountain, this horse is currently in a mountain EC. But I'm just gonna manage some this really quickly. If we just go to the, the equestrian center. Whenever you pick an EC to put your horse in for skilling, you wanna go for one that has a lesson price of 60. And the reason for this is, if I just go to my own EC here, I think this will be the best way to show you, is because lessons add skills to a horse. And the better the lessons, the better the gain. So you can see that my lesson price right now is 59, and I'm only getting two, 0 0.249. If that was 60, the price lesson, that would be 0 0.25. And 0 0.25, you get it on two skills, so that's 0 0.5. So you're gaining skills every time from that. So we'll just go back. 
So we have this horse in 60, less knee C. That's going to be really important from two years old on, whenever we can start doing lessons. So we'll start doing farce rides. And when you do forest rides, you're gaining three skills. And those three skills are dressage, gallop, and jumping. Now, you might be thinking, do I only need to do one type? No, you need to do all types of rides when you do a skiller. It's very important that you do. So what I will do is I will pause here and I will keep doing the forest rides until they're complete. And I'll, when I'll, I'll show you when I know they're complete. So if we just look here at the minute, we can see that we've got 16% done in forest rides so far. So I'll just go back and I'll pause there and I'll come back when I've finished forest rides. So you just need to keep... Actually, no, I'll not pause and I'll tell you why. It's because... If I pause and I continue doing forest rides, I'm going to forget one of the most important things about skilling. So I'll just not actually for the moment. You're just going to have to deal with this being really long video. I'm sorry, guys. So we will keep working away at this for now. Obviously, you want to make sure I've got auto feed on, and I've also got um, the ability to put the horse straight to bed with. Uh, automatic bedding which is a perk from the rain divine so that's why it's doing that if you're just wondering why that is so it's nearly two years old now let me just age it so now the horse is two years old when the horse is two year old two, two years old you need to put a water of youth on it and the reason you put a water of youth on at this stage is because whenever you have a water of youth on a horse a water of Youth means the horse ages one month instead of two months. And the benefit of this is you can do twice as many lessons. So it makes it much, much more skilled in the long run. So you want to make sure that once it's two years old, you begin doing lessons and that you've got the Y on. So the Y is on, we'll do our first lesson. So this is what I was talking about earlier, this plus 0 0.25 that I was talking about. So I'm going to rename this horse just so I don't forget because I have this horrific ability to forget to lassen horses. It's probably the one reason that I wreck so many skillers whenever I do them. Okay, so I will put a harmony pack on it. And I'm not going to put, I'm not going to choose a coat yet. We're going to wait, but I'm going to do what I like to call the traffic light lesson lesson. <laughs> Where it's basically put it all... Some of it in green, some of it in orange or amber, and some of it in red. Because this is half the time is the only reason it keeps my attention and I don't end up doing it wrong. So, if you're very good and you remember to do your lessons, that's great. It's just, I am not one of those people. So, almost there. This I have to say this is a very tedious way. If they ever make this easier, that you can just, like, if you want to select all of it, you can. I would really love if they would do that because I think it's horrifically tedious the way that the layers are done. No way. But this is more of a complaint than anything useful, so. Um, now just the last one. And there we go. We'll see if that. So we've got our horse, and I'm just going to put a landscape on it. I'm going to put a very dark landscape on it for now just so that it's more obvious. Let's see if we can pick something quite dark. We'll do something a little bit more fancy later, but for now we'll just we'll go with this because we've got an unlimited layer, so we can change this again later. Okay, so once it's two years old, you want to make sure you're doing a lesson every single day until the horse is 25. That is one of the most important things to remember. So lesson between two years and 25 years old in an equestrian center with 60 e lessons. Okay, and. Whenever, I'll talk about another point that's very important for lessons later on, but for now I will not worry too much. So I'm just going to cover some of the essential things that we've talked about already. So the essentials for the skiller is breathe the full from 100 butt parents um, with Aphrodite's tears or a hair pack. Water of youth at two years old. You're also going to need 20 pieces of Clyde or a Clyde pack. If you have VIP, you can get a Clyde pack for six passes, I think. It's five or six. My, my memory's gone. So... And you want to make sure you do full games correctly. So we've got the next pack on. 
we have a harmony pack on. I also want to put in Medusa's blood on it because that will give it an extra bonus. So we'll get some Medusa's blood and give it some wings, which will give it a bonus. Uh, we'll put the Felidae stroke on as well. Now, not all of these are completely not really essential. Some of these are desirables. So we'll just add anything else. We'll also, uh, I'll not put a Hypnos blanket on it. I don't really need it. Let's see if we can put a bonus pack on. So one of the things just I'm going to mention with the bonus pack, if you're VIP, the horseshoe studs come included in the, the bonus pack as far as I remember. And other, oh no, sorry. I'm trying to think about this. The one thing I want to say is with horseshoe studs, the time they're put on the horse is the important part because whenever they go on the horse, right? So it says here, the horseshoe studs bonus goes on the horse's hat skill whenever it's put onto the horse. So right now, I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at my horse. Now, this horse, I want for dressage. So I want the skills to go on dressage. And right now, dressage is my highest skill. So we'll just click and we'll add the bonus pack because I'm happy enough with that. So we've added the bonus pack now. And we'll just check. And yeah, it's on dressage where we wanted it. And then the other thing, if we can... I'm just going to check if I have a... No. Well, actually, I do. I do have one. I forgot. Okay, so the other thing that I'm going to do now, because I might forget to do it later, is I'm going to put the horse in the box for 10 hours. And the reason for this is because I want to try and find the comb and the hoof pick. The comb and the hoof pick, once you obtain them, stay on the horse. So in that respect, they're very, very handy. So we'll just age this horse a little bit. We'll put it back in the box again. And there we go. We've got the hoof pick. So now we just need to get the comb. So... I'm not going to worry about training or anything for a moment. Do the last one again. I'm going to put it in the EC box. So, but basically at some stage along the time that you're doing your skill or you want to get, make sure you've got the comb and the hoof pick. I don't think I'm going to get it right now, but eventually hopefully I will get it. So, I'm going to pause this now. What I'm going to continue to do is I'm going to do lessons and I'm going to do forest rides until they're complete. So forest rides are complete. So I'll be back in a little bit, guys. Okay, so I've been working away on the forest rides, and the forest rides are now complete. And the reason I know that is because whenever I click a duration, it just says energy, but it doesn't show me any skill gain. So, and if I also go into skills here, you'll see that the forest rides are finished. So jumping, gallop, and dressage. You'll also see the stamina, speed, and trotter at 99%. I went and trained mountain because I thought it would be easier just to train away at mountains. So I was doing lessons every single day, making sure every time I aged I lessened it, and also doing mountain rides. So mountain rides give you speed, stamina, and trot. So we'll finish mountain rides, and now mountain rides are all done. You can see that beach rides are grayed out. Count the beach rides until five years old, so whenever the horse is five, year old, five years old, we'll get to that. So next, you might want to focus on the training. Now, whenever I'm doing this skiller video, I like to do rides first, then training, then competitions. It doesn't matter which order you do it in, you can do rides first if you, or you can do training first if you wanted, you can do comp competitions first. I just prefer to do it that way. So there's, it doesn't affect how the horse turns out. As long as you're making sure you do lessons every time you age that horse between two years and 25 years old, no matter what you're doing, whether it's training rides or competitions, then you're okay. So what I'll do next is I'll do all of the training and once all the training is complete so if you don't know how to do training it is literally this simple okay it is click and it will increase so it's five percent done so if I keep doing that it'll keep going up and up so we'll do that so we'll do lesson and then we'll do some stamina training and the other thing I'll mention and this is extremely important when you're doing skillers don't let your horse's health go below 100%. So this bit here, sorry. This bit here, health. Don't let that go under 100%. If it does go under 100%, do not, under any circumstance, do rides, training, or competitions. Because then the health penalty is incurred and you can lose skills on the horse. And you'll never be able to get them back. So I'll pause it there. I'll finish all of this training and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've completed all the training, and just, if I just click on it here to show you, you can see that training is finished for all of those skills. So if we click on here, we'll view the details, we can see that I've got 
all of them for here. So next we've got competition, rides on the beach, and we've still got lessons to do. So um, just I'm gonna one thing I'm gonna mention here because now we're going to go into competitions from three years old. You can enter competitions now with competitions and choosing your speciality. You want to be sure what type of ride or sorry competitions you want your horse to go into because if your horse, for example, is, you say for example you buy a horse that is specialized in cross country and you want it to do well in the Grand Prix for cross country. There's no point in making it Western right now unless you have the ability to switch it back, which is VIP Park. If you don't have the ability to change speciality at whatever age, you can change it up until the age of five. Now mine's over at the minute, but if you've by accident gone over and you've realized that you've put it, say for example, right, let's just pretend that I couldn't switch it back. So say I put my horse in Western and I've put the tack on or haven't put the tack on so I'll just I'll just put the tack on because I need to put the post-it and pack on anyway so I'll put the post-it and pack on so say you chose the wrong speciality by accident and you're thinking well the horse is over five years now and I can't change it back well if you have piece if you haven't put the pieces of cloud on yet you can so if we get the pieces of cloud pack if you're using pieces of cloud you're going to need 20 pieces of cloud if you're using the piece of cloud pack which is a VIP park then you get all 20 in one go. So there we go. We've put that on and we have to click to use them. So let's keep, let's use them and make this horse back down to five years, just hypothetically. Okay, it is getting really windy outside, but it's okay. Um, so we'll edge it back down. We're nearly there, so. Almost. So now you can see the ability to add the piece of cloud disappeared and it's because the horse is too, now too young to use the piece of cloud. You can't put a piece of cloud in a horse that's under five years. So if you had put the wrong speciality, now you can change it. So I have the ability to do that with VIP anyway, but you would have the ability to change it here. So because I did my last skiller, I did my last skiller in Western Riding and I'm I would do this one in Western Redden because it's quicker in terms if I do barrel and I do trail competitions and I'll explain why. I'll go into my EC. In competitions, barrel gives you stamina, speed, and gallop, and trail gives you dressage, trot, and jumping. That's all six skills, so I only have to do two types of lessons. With classical, there's no competition like that. There's no two competitions. I have to do three types of competitions to get all the skills. So if you're interested, there, there it is there. All the different competitions and the skills that it gives you. So quickly, I'll go back here. So if I wanted to get all the skills on this horse very quickly, I would just go and barrel and trail. But because I did my last one Western, I'm going to do this one classical. Just for a bit, of, a bit of a change. So we've done the lesson, we can age. So we'll confirm, we'll do the lesson. Try and do the lesson at the start of the day, every single day, and make it a habit because then you're less likely to miss lessons. So we have the training and the rides done except for beach. Now, we could do beach right now. Now the handy thing about beach is you can now choose exactly which skill you want to move points to, okay? So, whenever, the reason beach rides are so important is beach rides don't gain skills, they don't improve the skills of your horse, what they do is they move skills. So you could choose to move skills from dressage or to jumping, and I have a video on beach rides if you want it for more information, you can go and watch that. Now for this horse, I want the skills from jumping to go on dressage. So that's what I'm gonna focus on. So now by default, it'll do this because this horse's best skill is dressage and its lowest right now is jumping. So as you can see, it's reset it when I refresh the page. So let's start doing that. And I'll just go back to it again. So you can see it pluses my dressage skill and it minuses my jumping skills. So let's Okay, so if we just quickly look at dressage, we've got one, five, eight, two, three, seven. If we do that, 
it goes to 534.02 and it would have taken away from from jumping as you can see here you can see minus on jumping and plus on dressage so I'm going to pause it there I'm going to finish my beach rides and okay so I've finished beach rides and if I click on beach and I click any time at all it says that less and less and less and doesn't have any skills to transfer now you might look down at your horse and go but there's still points on dressage it's not it doesn't let you move all of the skills from a particular skill and move it to an it lets you take a certain percentage of it so now that we've done that, so all the rides are done and all the training's done and all we've left now is competitions. So now we want to decide what competitions we want to go into and I just want to enter competitions to bold. So just to aid understanding I'll open this up. So we're just going to go with, we're going to ignore Western for this time and we're just going to look at classical. So the only classical competition that gives you stamina is cross country so we're going to need to do cross country competitions. And I am also going to do trot and gallop, and the reason is I don't want to enter. The reason is I just don't want to enter dressage until later on, until my skiller's nearly done, because my skiller's a the skiller is good at dressage, so I want to wait to enter those competitions to give it the best chance of winning dressage competitions. So we're going to ignore dressage for now, basically, and just focus on doing the other competition types. Now. What I'll do is I'll keep the auto enter off for the moment and we'll just go in here and we'll just click enter. So there you can see we've got some stamina, some dress and some jumping from that. Now if you just want to enter all competition types to get lots of wins you can do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter cross country and then what I'll do is I'll do trot and gallop probably and then I'm going to do possibly show jumping. Um, but I'm not. I'm not going to enter dressage. But I'll let you know what I do whenever I come back. So I'm just going to pause it. Okay. So I just entered cross country competitions over and over again, and you can see that stamina, dressage, and jumping have bolded. So I'm just going to do gallop and trot competitions now. We don't need to do jumping because jumping just gives us jumping speed and dressage, and we're going to get speed from doing trot and gallop competitions anyway. So we'll start doing gallop competitions. And obviously I need to remember to do the lessons. If I just miss one, I'm going to be really annoyed. <laughs> I have a funny feeling I have, but let's hope I haven't. So we'll just keep up with these for now. And then later on I'll show you a way to finish the skiller quicker or faster. Oh, don't... Oh, wait a minute. Was I able to... Oh, thank God. I thought I couldn't do the lesson there for a second. That's the other thing. Don't let your horse... This is why I said do the lesson at the start and I forgot my own rule. Because if you leave your lesson too late in the day, you might not be able to do it at all. And that would be a tragedy, believe me. <laughs> because I think the last skill I did previous to this, I missed one lesson. Because I was going too quickly, I wasn't paying attention. And it was done within about a split second and I knew it was too late. Okay, so there we go. We've got speed and gallop have bolded now, so we're just gonna do track competitions. I'm keep going to, I'm gonna keep checking that I've done my lesson. So we're nearly there. So what I'll do is I'll pause there, I'll just keep doing track and lessons and that will bold all of the skills. Okay, so I did cross country, I did gallop and trot competitions, and you can see all of the skills are bolded. And you can do it slightly different. I just didn't want to do dressage competitions, which would have bolded me, which would have bolded dressage, gallop, and trot for me. And then I would have just had to have done cross country and show sure, jumping. Really, one way or another, you're going to have to do three competitions at least. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the rest of my pieces of cloud. So chances are I'll probably go under five years before I use all of them. The reason the pieces of cloud are so important is because they allow you to do more lessons. And if you have your horse in a 60 AEC and you have water view sauna at two years old and you make sure to lessen it every day between two years old 
and 25, then you will get an extra 170 at 0.5 skills. So that is hopefully what we're going to do. Okay, so now the horse has gone under 5 again, so we'll have to wait and put in the rest of the clouds. So what I'm going to do is age it forward again. Now, this is the thing that I'm going to show you that I'm going to do right now. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit for this. So what I'm going to do is, I said earlier that you needed to make sure that you kept the health 100% when you're doing rise training competitions. Now we've finished that, they're all done. But we've still, and we've got rides on the beach that are done, we've still got lessons to do. Lessons aren't affected by health. So what I tend to do is whenever I have finished all of this and it's all bolded and I know that I've it all done, what I just simply do is I lessen it and I age it. And yes, the health will go down, but so long as you have a Philosopher's Stone on it, whether you put it on with the next pack or you put it on separately, the horse won't die. So as you can see, the horse's health is down at 14, but it's not going below that. I'm not feeding the horse either. This doesn't damage the horse in the long run. You will have to improve its health at some point, but you don't need to worry about it too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to age it far enough ahead. Whoops, I nearly missed a lesson there. This is why I'm saying you always have to be so careful. So we'll use some more pieces of cloud. And what I'll do is I'll put on all the rest of the pieces of cloud. So the last five pieces. I'll keep doing the lessons. And then what I'll do is I'll come back when the horse is 23 years old. So what the thing is, I'm literally only going to lessen and age it until it's 23. Okay, the horse is now 23 years old. I've been doing that same technique where I just lessen it, age it, lessen it, age it, lessen it, age it. I obviously need to use the last couple of pieces of cloud. But as I've said, don't use that technique until you have everything bolded. And don't use the technique if the horse doesn't have an immortal stone on it, or sorry, a philosopher's stone, to make it immortal. Because obviously otherwise it'll die. So... We've used all the pieces of cloud now, so that's all 20 pieces of cloud on, so I'll just age it back up to 23 doing that same thing. So this technique, you don't have to use it, it's not mandatory or anything like that, it's just a technique I use because I like to get the skiller done. The way I used to do skillers uh, many years ago was I would continue to do lessons from after the time I'd finished bolding, right up until 25. So the skillers would usually take me a considerably long time in that respect. I mean, now I can do it maybe in 40 minutes to an hour, which isn't too bad. But if I was doing them before, it might have taken me two, three hours just because I was sitting and going and doing as much as I could. The benefit of that is you make a lot more, you know, get a lot more earnings with the horse, you enter a lot more competitions, a lot more wins, you know, things like that. But Overall, I just prefer getting it done now. I find it quite a tedious exercise, so I think if you do a lot of skillers, it's maybe more preferable. So now that the horse is 23, we will start to feed it, and you can see the horse is in really bad shape because it's really thin. So now what we want to do is we want to lessen every day, and we want to put it to bed, groom it, feed it. You want to make sure it's getting all that care and stuff, and if you want to give it a health mash as well, you can do that. So continue with that and I'll come back whenever it's nearly 25. Okay so our horse is now 25. Now the reason I started looking after it and caring for it to get a feed note when it was 23 was because if I left it too late it would take a really takes quite a while to get the horse back up to the weight that's supposed to be and the health so you're better starting it two years before 25 roughly. Um, so our horse has had its last lesson done and everything now if you don't have if you want to check okay so we finished it now we've done all the rides we've done the competitions we've done lessons every single day and we did the training we had the full games we had the inborn skills so if you don't have this little thing here that shows you okay i've viewed the de details and as you can see we've missed a lesson on the horse i knew i was gonna miss one i knew it right okay um it's just typical for me, so we'll not even we'll not even go into it. Right. So five, eight, five, one, four. That was the inborn skills 
of the phone at the time. So if say if you didn't have this ability to look at these things, you would note down whatever it was at the time. So you've got your inborn skills, then you would add on the 60 skills from full games. Then what you would do is you would go to the genetics and you'd look at the genetics and what you would do is add on one eight eight nine point zero three. So you'd be looking at whatever the total is up here. So then you've got that. So then what you would do is you would add on the lessons. Now if you do, as I've said, lessons from between two years and 25 years old in an EC with 60 lessons and then you cloud 20 times, you make sure you do it every single day and you don't miss any like I do. Then you're going to add on 178.5. So that would have been what we would have got if I hadn't missed a lesson, but you can see that we missed one lesson. So I hope that you don't miss any lessons and you don't get the health uh, penalty either. So if we hadn't done our rides or training competitions or the rides in the beach when the horse had 100% health then we would get that health penalty bonus where it would or sorry that health penalty not bonus that takes points off that you would lose so we didn't get one of those which is good so now we're going to give it its golden apple obviously the most important part of the whole thing so let's see what we've got I like going for limited coats so you can pick whatever you want really We'll go with this one, I like this one. Right. Then we need to give it a, a fitting name. And I think I know just the one. Ooh. There we go. So, save that. Now we need to find a, a nice background for it. But really, it's, it is a matter of practice. Uh, even with practice, and I've had years of practice, and I still miss lessons because I have this ability to, ability to. So, really, you know, it will, it does take practice, and you things you need to sort of learn and, and figure out that, you know, what is really important to focus on and things like that. But really, generally, it's pretty straightforward uh, once you get into it, and. We'll go with this one. Probably change it again later. I'm not really sure what I want, but there we go. So that's our skiller all done. And if you stuck here to the very end, you know, well done. Uh, I'll take you million stars for the skiller. So guys, I hope you had a lovely day. I hope this was helpful if you have any questions or if you want to know more about skillers. As I've said, there's a playlist I have on the channel with winning skillers and there's heaps of stuff in there that are important. This one isn't done yet. I have bonuses that I still need to get. There's Oh, this is actually, this is another thing I'll just quickly add. The equestrian center bonus. In my last video I was talking about the plus 10. There is better, plus, you know, there is better ones, but at the time when you can't, it's only plus 10. So if I go into, if you want to check and see what the best equestrian center bonuses are, you want to be looking at the best equestrian centers. Simple as that, really. So there's a one with a plus 12 bonus. So you obviously you want to board your horse in the best possible EC with the best possible bonuses. So you can obviously check the best equestrian centers and see what bonuses they offer and see if you can get your horse boarded in one of those to get the best possible one. So anyway, guys, I hope you had a lovely day. Bye. -bye.